Okay. I know it's partly my fault because I picked such long movies so we don't have time to discuss, but we do only have 10 minutes left. Uh, so let's uh, talk about these questions together and I will share with you some of the answers that I heard from the class. Question one, is this a realist film? Group two said yes, they think it is a realist film. Then I asked them, how would you explain some of the more crazy parts of the movie? And they said that at, at its core, it still reflects human experiences that people face in real life. It's just a little more extreme than we would usually encounter. But that uh, all of the so-called crazy elements can still be explained. The film does try to make them make sense if you pay attention to the details uh, and the logic of how things develop. Um, I think this is a really interesting answer because Dave, this is one of the early films by David Lynch. Uh, if you know anything about his movies, you know that he is a master of surrealism. And if you watch some of his later movies, they are even crazier and make less sense. Um, but in this early work, it does feel like he has not given up on realist logic yet. Um, so, you know, if this kind of uh, weird movie is interesting to you, you can look into his later work. Question two, uh, the world's wild at heart and weird on top. Group three, do you have any further ideas about this question? No? Okay, so let's talk about it together. So at one moment near the uh, la uh, near the back half of the movie, Lula complains the world's wild at heart and weird on top. So first of all, what does this mean? Well, uh, near the very end, when uh, Sailor is talking to the good witch, uh, the good witch tells him to go back to Lula. He says, I can't. I'm wild at heart. It's not good for her. So from that, we can we can kind of guess that wild at heart means like crazy inside, like there's something inside him that makes him uh, act in crazy ways. But what about weird on top? Well, there are two possible ways to understand this. One is uh, on top means in addition. So not only is the world crazy, the world is also weird. Another way to understand this is on top, meaning on the surface. So everybody is crazy. And then when you look at them, they seem very weird. Um, so when Lula describes her world like this, do you agree? It does seem like everybody in her world, all of the different situations are pretty crazy. And especially when they are staying at that cheap uh, motel in Big Tuna, Texas, the people they meet are also very weird. Um, so yeah, it does seem like an accurate description of the world that she sees. Um, but she says this like it's a bad thing. Do you think it's a bad thing for people to be crazy and seem weird? I think uh, it really depends on your own life experience, right? If your life experience is full of people that are crazy and weird, it may not seem like a bad thing. It might just seem like, you know, that's just how life is. But if you grew up in a very traditional family and followed all the rules and you were uh, trying always to be a good and normal person, then meeting so many crazy and weird people might seem a little scary, might seem dangerous, and it could seem like a bad thing. But what it, does the film think? Laura, I'm uh, sorry, Lula is only one person in the film. Uh, the film itself, the whole film, may not agree with her single perspective. So how do you think the film feels about the world being crazy and weird? So here's the thing. If you really think about it, there are so many weird people in this movie. How many of them are evil? I would say three. Uh, Mariette, Lula's mom. And then she also kind of regrets her actions, but then goes uh, goes through with it anyway. 
Santos, the criminal mastermind, and Bobby, who is just legitimately crazy. To me, those seem like the only three really evil people. Most of the other characters are weird or strange, unusual, but they don't seem evil. So from that, we can kind of say that maybe the film is trying to show us that the world can be much weirder and crazier than you expect, but still be a pretty good place, considering uh, the different situations and how people behave in those situations. Uh, that's just my thinking. Maybe you will have a different way of looking at it. Question three, can you name one normal person? Group four said Pace, the little kid. Well, yeah, I mean, he doesn't get to do much, right? He's on screen for like a minute. Um, but also he kind of, he accepts Nicolas Cage as his dad a little too fast, right? His mom says, oh, this guy wearing a snakeskin jacket who just gave you a toy stuffed lion is your father. And he's like, okay, uh, kind of strange to me. Another possible normal person might be Lula. She, at least she seems less crazy than everybody else. Um, but she does do some crazy things, as Group 4 said. She runs away with a known convict. She breaks the law with him. Uh, even after seeing him kill a guy, she's still with him. Um, but the film, I think, adds even more explanation to her character. Uh, reminding us many times that she was raped as a young girl and that maybe she was her her mind was uh, influenced by that situation and she grew up with a crazy mother so you know she must have been influenced by that situation um so i think the film tries very hard to make her seem more normal even if she isn't like a hundred percent normal so the second part of the question why why are there so few of them and i guess that links back to my thinking uh, in the previous question. By uh, showing even like minor characters as crazy and weird, but harmless or even helpful, uh, I think the film is trying to show us that the world can be so many different things, people can be so different, and yet that does not make the world uh, always as dangerous and that you know difference is not always a bad thing. Question. Four, references to The Wizard of Oz, group five. Do you have further thoughts on this question? No? Okay, yeah, the, the connection is not always very clear, but it does seem like uh, Sailor and Lula are also traveling a road and they're heading toward, I think they're trying to get to California, uh, but the, the idea is they're, they're aiming for a better future together. Um, and in The Wizard of Oz, when they finally get to the Emerald Palace, they realize that the wizard is a fake. In this movie, they don't get to their destination. But we can uh, take one step back. If we think about the movie itself as a journey, when we reach the end of the movie, does that ending feel fake? To me, it feels uh, different from the rest of the movie, right? Uh, Sailor uh, is punched out. He sees the good witch. The good witch tells him to chase his love. He wakes up. The other guys don't stop him. He runs on top of cars in a really romantic way, full of like loud sentimental music. And then he sings to Lula as the end credits roll. To me, that feels like a different movie. Um, so in this sense, maybe uh, the film is using these Wizard of Oz references as a kind of joke. It's saying like, uh, oh, you think that this is a happy ending? After watching two hours of weirdness, you think that this would be the proper ending for this story? Um, maybe it's not uh, exactly real. Or it's not worth believing in. It's not trustworthy. Question five, uh, nobody chose this question. The music, 
So like a lot of the music is rock and roll, right? So that re reflects the characters' crazy hearts. But then when serious things happen, like they dis discover the car crash, or when Johnny gets killed, the film gives us classical music, uh, which is closer to the music of tragedy without being sentimental tragic music. Uh, and then finally, you have like the two instances of slow jazz when Sailor sings to Lula near the beginning and then at the very end. Um, and that can be kind of like the romantic heart of their relationship. Uh, and so like the rock music especially is related to Sailor's dancing, right? those aggressive fighting dancing style. And it can reflect how much energy and discontent and ambition and like a sense of, of uh, not belonging to the world. And he's expressing all of that with the rock music and through his dancing. Uh, that's one way of looking at it. Finally, how can you describe the movie without using the three easy choices? Uh, group one shows unpredictable and different, uh, which I think are good choices. Yes, the movie is very different from most movies we see today. One reason is because things happen unpredictably. The story is not a straightforward story. Things happen and come in from different angles. Things are unpredictable. Uh, why does it do this? Uh, group one said maybe it does this because it's actually a kind of parody. It might be parodying a regular Hollywood movie. It's saying, like, uh, can you, if I show you a normal movie in this way, uh, you can see how ridiculous the regular Hollywood movie is. Right? Each part of this film is related to a certain kind of popular movie. But when you put it all together, it feels strange, it feels weird, it feels very different. So that could be one reason why uh, the film feels like this. Okay, questions? Uh, if I went too fast, you can go back and uh, look at the recording. So uh, see you next week for another surprise movie.